Hi, this is LJ Bothell, and this recording is to help you with some tips and information to help make going to a community college at Shoreline Community College easier, more interesting, um, more full of resources and uh, uh, tools that you can use to help you get through your courses, have a great time, learn lots, and move forward into whatever future you want to have. So what I'm going to be focusing on is sharing some information about Shoreline Community College resources with you, um, things you could do when you need to get some help, uh, tips on organizing your time, and then just sort of closing hot tips of things that I learned when I was a student one of several times and had to go through all of this same kind of stuff myself. So let's get going. So first, with Shoreline Resources, we want to take a look a little bit about the website, your email, connectivity, and um, access to Canvas. So basically, when you go to the Shoreline Community College website, one of the pages that you'll want to start with is looking for current students. Now, granted, every few quarters, the Shoreline Community College website undergoes some changes and adjustments and moving around of information a bit as our folks keep trying to find better ways to make things clearer and easier to access. At this point in time, though, what you want to do is look for the part of our website for current students. And uh, I have a graphic here that indicates several things that will be of interest to current students such as Canvas, which is the learning management tool that many of your instructors, if not almost all of them, will use for online access to your course information. So you'll get information like your syllabus, your deadlines, maybe assignments you need to upload, um, information about where to get your textbook, and so on. Also, student accounts. Now, students can use their own preferred email address when they uh, enroll with the college. And Canvas will link to that preferred email address. However, at the same time, for maximized security and privacy, students are also given a Shoreline at go.shoreline.edu email address, which you may choose to use instead. But uh, you'll be able to find that information out in student accounts. And then there are other tools that students may have access to use, such as CTC Link to look at what your own progress is, a tool called Starfish, which is still being rolled out and updated and made available for students when they're working with advisors to get a feeling for concerns and questions they have, and AIM, which is a tool that's used um, with student um, accessibility services. So if you have additional needs you need for accommodations in a classroom, AIM will be a tool like that. You may not have to worry about Starfish or AIM right away, but those are things that may come up. But anyway, um, let's see. So for your student accounts, now, if you're already looking at this uh, video, chances are you're already in Canvas. You were able to access it from one of my course uh, websites. But even so, this is a good refresher for you. Basically, our student accounts can be set up through the uh, student current um, students page uh, where you can look up the CTC link and student accounts. And you have different things that you could do there. So say, for instance, you do set up a Shoreline email address and then you forget the password or you forget the password for the CTC link student ID number that you are um, given when you register at the college. You have the ability to make those changes. Um, and as I indicated earlier, Canvas emails will default to the email address that you enrolled at the school with. So Canvas. Um, when you get into Canvas, you'll need to link in with your CTC link ID number, the password that you create, and hopefully we'll you know, keep remember it, write it down somewhere, but keep it safe. And then you'll be able to enter the available Canvas courses you have for the quarter based on what the instructor set up as the scheduling for those classes to be available. Um, make sure that in each of your classes that you go to your Canvas account preferences and set up that notifications from announcements and maybe important emails from your instructor do get emailed to you because often your instructor will let you know through an announcement something like 
hey, I'm not able to have office hours this week, or they've been pushed back an hour because of a meeting. So I just want to let you know. And if you get this in your email, then you'll be aware. And if you don't get this in your email, and then you'll wonder what's going on. So make sure you take that. Um, also make sure that when you're in Canvas and in your own Canvas account setup, that you note that you're in the proper time zone for the school you're going to. So um, the school, you know, Shoreline Community College is in Shoreline, Washington, which is near Seattle, Washington, which is Pacific Standard Time. And that's what the instructor is expecting um, assignments and things to be due at. Advising services. Now, students have a variety of reasons why they may need advising. Your instructor can help you with information about the course itself. And depending on how many courses they teach, they may be able to offer you a little advice as needed about the program of study that their course fits into. But a lot of instructors will have courses that are potentially electives for several different programs. So your instructor is not the person you're going to go to for advice about your program of study normally. Yes, if you're taking an Excel course and you're in an accounting degree, there's a little bit of work your instructor can do to advise you there. But if you're taking an Excel course and your overall degree happens to be in graphic design, or it happens to be in automotive and you just wanted Excel so you could have spreadsheet experience, your, uh, your, your instructor is not going to know anything about the automatic automotive program. So that's what advising services is for. Advising services lets you have the ability to talk with college advisors about academic and program advice beyond the course you're in. Sometimes it is about the course you're in. Maybe you aren't getting your questions quite answered or the uh, uh, instructor indicates, you know, you might want to look into some additional tutoring. Check in with advising to find out what resources they have available to you this quarter. Uh, you may have other academic issues that are going on that aren't related to a specific course, but you'd like some help with. Maybe you'd like to find out if there's some success coaching, if there's a navigator for students in your program of study, if there's any kind of mentoring, advice about tutoring and e-tutoring. If you may need accommodations in a class, such as you have um, dys dyslexia, or you have some anxiety concerns that affect your ability to you know, reasonably take a test in a short period of time, you would want to start with the advising services department so they can route you over to the student accessibility services after maybe asking you a few questions. Um, information about other learning support. And then the Starfish tool is what our advising services will be communicating with you in, in the future. However, as of spring, summer, and fall 2023, this tool is still being deployed to the college. So it's a little slow and not totally available yet. But if you start hearing the word starfish when you are talking to an academic advisor, that's what that's about. Now, just in general, getting help when you're taking a class, whether it's one of mine or any other instructors, who do you ask for different kinds of help, like tech support, e-learning oriented help, counseling sort of help? So Help me. And I've been here myself. Again, I've been a student at several different colleges and there were times I had no idea where to go because there's so many resources and trying to get them narrowed down, right? Technical support services um, will tell you more about computer labs, uh, maybe will be who you communicate with if you were to get and be borrowing a Shoreline Community College Chromebook. If you have problems with your email, say you're using the school email or even your personal email isn't connecting quite right with Canvas, you can check with TSS or you could check with e-learning. If you want to download the free Microsoft Office 365 um, Office Suite application, Tech Support Services um, is where that happens. If you have questions for the help desk, maybe you're not sure why um, a USB drive isn't working or why a program that is part of the college tools that you use isn't working right. They can at least give you advice and ways to go look at how to troubleshoot. If you're using a Chromebook, incidentally, or if you're using a Microsoft S laptop computer, 
those are two of the kind of very low cost, very useful laptops students can use, but they don't really have any hard drive space for you to install programs on them. And you may need to talk to um, tech support services about getting into Splashtop, which allows you to log into the college's computers and use one of them as a virtual machine because they'll have the programs you need to work on, even though you're using your computer as an interface and logging into them. So you talk to TSS for about that. And if you tend to be using the tech lab in the library instead of one of the computer labs, then you would also talk to TSS if there are issues there. Canvas needs. So this is where you would normally talk to e-learning services. Say you're starting a course and you're starting it a week late because you've got a senior tuition waiver or some other waiver that has you starting it a week late. You would check with the instructor and with e-learning to find out if you could at least get into Canvas during the first week of the quarter so that you don't fall behind, even though technically you're still pending the final enrollment to go through. Um, CTC link issues. If you're having troubles with your CTC link number or password and you're not able to reset your password, eLearning Services is a great place to check in on that. To look for an online learning orientation, see what they have there. So if you really aren't familiar with working fully online and you're uncomfortable or you want to know if there's any tips, e-learning e services should be able to give you some info there. Online student support, they would be able to direct you to e-tutoring and to virtual campus related uh, information. If you have a, a unique needs, student accessibility services, it, it needs with getting around the campus, it needs with accessing materials because you have different visual or different audio needs. Um, student accessibility services is really important for you to check with and don't hesitate. Your instructors want to be helpful. At the same time, if you have a need that needs you to have twice as long on a, uh, a test that's scheduled or that needs you to have a little more time uh, extension on the occasional assignment because of anxiety or because you are undergoing medical treatment and have some medications that may not be giving you the support for concentrating on your work that you need, you would want to talk to student accessibility services so that they can work with your instructor to make sure to come up with a plan well, with you, a plan of what you need to access and succeed in the course. Then student accessibility services will work with you to create that plan, communicate with the instructor, and then that way it's all kind of prepared for you. And you want to do this as early in a quarter as you can. If not, even as you're first enrolling with the class. Financial aid is another thing. A lot of students need financial aid. I know that I did. I had, uh, I had worker retraining at some point. I was given a, uh, a grant for a course of study. I had to take short-term loans out for books. I've been there. Now you may already have a tuition waiver or you may have a grant, but you still have a few things where there's a shortfall, like needing your internet connection to be paid for because your actual um, um, financial aid doesn't. So even if you already have financial aid, you wanna check with our financial aid department to find out what additional assistance you might be able to get with your tuition, fees, books, stuff in the bookstore, transportation, food, um, things that maybe needs a beyond approved scholarship ship and grant coverage. Um, they will also be able to help you with payment plans. So you may or may not be able to get additional financial aid, but they can work with enrollment and, and payments to figure out how to make that workable for you so you can stay in the class and keep working to succeed without having it interrupted by lack of payment. Other needs that you may end up having, and this is where the counseling services come in. This is the more personal thing. So if you have issues in your life that are affecting you for um, a big part of the quarter, something that your instructor can't really help you with because they can't keep extending assignments for you, but you have a bigger issue, talk with counseling, find out what assistance you can get. Maybe you have some health challenges, want to find out if there's any resources available to you for, for, for that sort of thing. If you need title, nine sexual discrimination advice. 
um, and you don't have someone on campus you already trust to, to initiate that with, or if you have other discrimination related questions that you might be um, in need of. Find out if there's emergency shelter, something happens and your home ends up with a flood or something and you need somewhere to stay talk with our counseling services. If you are worried about violence, if you have crisis of some kind, they have information and referral services to help give you assistance. They also have ADA referral info, as I've mentioned earlier, and diversity and inclusion services information. Now, these are all resources the colleges have for you. Our goal is to make sure that we're student focused because you are here, um, we're here for you. We're here to help you get the tools and the learning and everything you need in order to go forth and do great things. And we do have a lot of resources and we try to make them available and we try to communicate well. And your individual instructors who tend to be your main point of contact in each class, they do the best they can in the context of teaching the course and of knowing the college resources to help you or to refer you where you can get additional help. But in the end, all of that aside, you are the person who has to take as much of your own responsibility for your own learning and your own actions when you're going to school. You're the person who chose to enroll in college and to find out how to get funding and to sustain it. You're the person who will then choose whether you show up to classes or not, or whether you ghost the instructor and don't respond to emails. It'll be up to you to participate in the work and to ask questions. If there are things that are getting in the way of that, if you have barriers that you need help with, it's up to you to get the work done, to learn what you can, to demonstrate that work, to ask for help, to work with other students, etc. It's also your choice to stay in contact with your instructors. They can reach out to you with announcements. They can reach out to you with emails and they could try to have a, a two way door. But it really is going to be up to you to respond. It's up to you to let them know as soon as possible anytime you have a concern. If you're starting a quarter and you know that you've already prepaid a week and a half out of town somewhere, it's up to you right at the beginning of the quarter to let your instructor know that there's this period of time you'll be out of town. Can you get some of your work done early so that you don't have to turn in anything late? If you come up with a really bad case of the flu or a cold or something else, it's up to you to let your instructor know that you're kind of slowed down and you're doing what you can. And maybe you might need a one or two day extension, but you have to let them know in advance. If you're having a tough quarter for some reason, maybe there's been a death in your family. Maybe you are having consistent issues with childcare and not having enough time for studying. You need to let your instructor know as soon as possible possible. There are a lot of times where students will wait until halfway through the quarter before they ever say hello to the instructor and let them know that's a problem. And that's really too late. Your instructor is there to help you, but they aren't really there for you to pile on five or six or seven late assignments at the last minute and expect them to have lots of time to give you good quality grades and feedback. You're going to be learning all along during the quarter, so you need to be communicating all along the quarter with your instructor if you have any concerns. And if for some reason you don't, if you get to week five of the quarter, week seven of the quarter, week nine of the quarter, and then suddenly want to com connect with your instructor and ask for a long extension and to turn in all of your work at one time, you're going to get a no because you're there to you know, work within the parameters of how the course is designed and how you can best learn. And then finally, it's up to you to focus on what your own needs are, to manage your own time, to figure out what motivates you while you're going to school, even when the quarter is dragging on and the weather is really cruddy and you have that head cold and whatever else is going on. It's up to you to figure out how to focus on what you need to get done and how to find and use the needed supports that the college provides and that the instructor can point you in the direction of. So it's up to you. You are the learner. And it's, it's, it's the same thing I've gone through. And um, you've got power. So here are a few tips that I learned as a student. 
get started early before a quarter even begins. When you've enrolled with your classes and you know what your schedule is, you want to make sure that you have your working student ID number, make sure that your password is working, make sure you've tested them so that you can get into Canvas, into the school email if you need to, into CTC link, and if you're working with advisors, into Starfish to see and add to your records. You need to organize whatever email interface you use for school. Maybe it's a Gmail account or a Yahoo account, but my recommendation has always been that you have a folder or label set aside just for school. And then within that folder or label, you have subfolders for each and every course you take. And then in each of those courses, that's where you'll put in emails that you get from the instructor, emails you get from registration, emails you get that are related to that course. So that way you always have it. Your instructor is going to be doing that too. So they will always keep a record of the emails they send to you, but you want to be able to look and find them really easily. So organize your email even before the quarter starts. Use a little time before the quarter starts to get familiar with the Shoreline College um, current students web page and links and the rest of the website. Find out where you can get at the information and set favorite links in your bookmarks or favorite um, favorites on your browser so you can get to them right away. Find out what your actual schedule is going to be and what the beginning and end days of the quarter schedule is going to be and plot out your calendar so that you know when the first week is, when the end of the instructional period is, when finals are due, etc. Also, make sure if you're not sure if you're going to be able to stay with the class and you think you might need to drop something, make sure to add to your calendar the drop dead drop date that is on the academic calendar, which is usually somewhere in week seven. And if you think that you're going to try a class or two out, but you're not really sure if they're going to work for you, make sure you know on your own calendar what the drop dead drop date is to get at least 50% of your funding back. Um, also, find out where your counseling, advising, support, and even parking information resources are. So if you need to get a parking pass and where you can park and where you can't park and what's closest to the rooms you're going to be in. If you're going to need child support and you want to find out what's on the campus, you need to do all of that before the quarter begins. Week one, basically day one, as soon as the instructor opens up the course with the syllabus, with their Canvas online tools, with whatever emails and announcements they send out to you, that's when you personally need to jump into action. It's easy to think the first week is going to be kind of easy and lazy, and some instructors are able to make their first week a little more relaxed, but it depends on the program. If you're in a nursing program, if you're in an automotive program, if you're in a program that aims for very specific certification, you're not going to have any time to lose at all. You're going to be from day one having to turn in work and answer questions and stay in contact. And other classes may give you a little bit of a grace period, but don't count on it. Start on day one of looking over the course info, making sure you're ordering your book, making sure if there's anything that you need, any resources you need. And if you don't have them, make sure also on day one, if you didn't already do it before the quarter started, to contact advising, to contact counseling, etc. Make sure that if there's any needed orientations you need as a student, if there's any computing skills, skills prep webinars that e-learning offers, take those right in the first week too. Make sure that any downloads you need to get, such as um, uh, getting Microsoft Office 365 free, the Office Suite, get that on your first day or two. Review your online class syllabus and schedule and add that to your own personal calendar for the quarter. Email your instructors if you have specific questions that their materials don't cover. Make sure to look over what they give you first. Look over the syllabus. Look over their Canvas website. If they have a Start Here First page, look that over and follow those steps and look at videos. But if after that there's something you really aren't getting, that's when you want to email them. You're also welcome to email them on day one or two and say, hi, I'm LJ Bothell. I'm in your BizTech um, 150 class or Biz 150 class, and I'm looking forward to being there. I think I've got all the information I need, but I just wanted to touch in so you knew that I'm in fact enrolled and 
life is cool. Or, you, know, you can say something like that. But make sure you're definitely contacting instructors right away if you have any issues or concerns. And finally, make sure you get on top of and stay on top of any financial aid, any student um, accessibility issues for the um, American Disabilities Act related accommodations you might need and any other support things you need. If financial aid doesn't come through, if your courses aren't paid for on time, you could at the end of the first week find yourself dropped from classes through no fault of your own or through no fault of your instructors. So it's up to you on day one to stay on top of your financial aid, whether it's through the standard FAFSA or Veteran Affairs or any other grants and tuition waivers. Up to you. Now, every week, make sure that you're checking your schedule and class deadlines to make adjustments. Make sure that you're asking for and getting help as quickly and as early as you need it. And consider working with another student or two, combining your efforts to study together, to share study materials, even though you'll be working independently and completely separately on your separate assignments. But, you know, share the time that you're learning. Plan for and expend at least two extra hours for every credit that you take in a course to do the actual work. If you have a two credit course, you'll be able to anticipate about two hours of either in person or online acquiring the course information through reading and videos and demonstrations. You'll need another at least four hours to do the work that's tied in with demonstrating what you're learning. If it's a five credit course, then you consider that you'll have five hours or so of incoming information for you to acquire through reading, through videos, through trying stuff out, through discussions, through team projects, and then another 10 hours or so a week of work that you do for the actual assignments that will help you demonstrate your learning what the instructor's course outcomes need you to learn. Don't skip on it. You know, the thing is, don't wait until the last minute or, you know, if your assignments are due at 11.59 p.m. to be uploaded onto Canvas, don't wait until 7 p.m. to start working on them. Really make sure that you're spreading out your time and taking your time learning during the course of the week and giving enough time. Double check that your work is turned in early and, uh, and or on time. So if you upload things to Canvas or an, another tool that your instructor asks you to use, make sure after you've submitted the work that you double check that it was in fact submitted. Because if after the deadline is over, your instructor goes to look at it and you've submitted a blank file or you submitted the wrong file or you thought you submitted something, but it didn't actually get uploaded, your assignment's go, uh, probably going to get a zero. Your instructor doesn't have a lot of time to take in late work that should have been submitted and double checked before the deadline. And then finally, keep an eye on your points in your class. If you have Canvas and you can look at your grades, look and make sure that you're keeping up, that you are usually getting the equivalent of, you know, 85 to 90 percent of the points in any given assignment. And if you're starting to see that slide, ask your instructor for help. Ask other instructors for additional study time so that you can work together. But make sure that you stay on top of it. Getting to week six, seven, eight, and finding out that you're missing half of your points in the class is not going to give you a passing grade, much less a C. 2.0 grade, which is what instructors um, uh, and programs tend to require from you to continue on in the programs. Basically, during the very last scheduled week of the quarter, this is where you want to make sure that if you have any final project that you definitely get it in a little early. Your instructors may or may not grade it until after the final deadline is done, but make sure it's in early, make sure it's the full and complete work, make sure that you've submitted it and it's attached. And if worse comes to worse and something really gets in your way, at least turn in as much of the work as you can get done so you can get some points for it. Make sure you check your Canvas points for the whole quarter. So if anything stands out, say an extra credit you did and you don't see the points showing up, that way you can let your instructor know before the course closes. Because the instructor does the best that they can, but we sometimes make mistakes. <laughs> um, organize your quarter's work, emails that you've collected during the quarter and prepare to archive them once the quarter is over. So you can refer to them if you need to, but they won't be an active folder because for next quarter, you'll want to prepare new folders for new courses, right? 
So get your email and your file storage ready for next quarter, even before the end of the current quarter. That way you could take your break for the two weeks and then jump right into the next quarter and start on day one as ready as possible. Hot tips. Mine are really comes down to have fun. I know it sounds weird. You're in school and a lot of people aren't really that fond of academic work. And also sometimes learning feels like it can be really hard. There's so many things to learn, not just the subject you're studying, but how does the instructor work and think and organize the material? How do you find it all? How do you keep track of it all? How do you make sure you're giving the instructor and the people who are assessing your work what they need to see from you to know that, yep, you're getting the point. Despite all of that, try to find ways to relax. Don't focus so much on whether you get a high grade as on are you learning what you need to be learning. Sometimes you're going to stumble. I know that I did. There were courses that I worked my hiney off in and I got a 3.6. But the thing is, is I learned so much that that was okay. You know, so keep those things in mind. Don't sweat the small stuff. Keep on top of things. Keep on top of your schedule. Communicate as you need to with your instructor. Check in with advising and counseling if you need assistance. Um, but otherwise, don't sweat the small stuff. Find as many things during your given day to, to, to take a moment to enjoy. You know, stay hydrated. Eat properly. Take naps. Do what you need to do. And definitely don't panic. And of course, my favorite rule is C number one, have fun. Finally, just keep in mind that procrastination is a time killer. I too have learned that lesson more than once. You have to take responsibility completely for your own learning. Use the instructor provided resources. If they give you reading materials and they give you video links and they give you things, go through them. They're there for a reason to help you jumpstart and have shortcuts to what you need to learn. Um, check and stay on target for your due dates. Use a calendar to organize yourself. Get help from the college as soon as you need it if you find that there's something going on with your academics, with your financial aid, something going on that's creating barriers for you to be able to do as good of work and learn as much as you want to, and so on. Buddy up with another um, student, an online student, if you're in an online course or in person. Have study groups. You can create online study groups using things like Discord or Zoom. And you can also meet in the college library or at um, you know, a Starbucks or a restaurant or at somebody's home. Don't wait for the last minute on anything. Don't wait. No. Always back up your work. If you're doing any kind of computerized work, especially, make sure you have at least one full backup when you're working on documents, whether it's in Word, Excel, some other tool. Save your work as you work on it. Make sure that you save a copy of it on an external USB and or hard drive. Make sure you have a cloud service that you're saving things to. Instructors can't grade work you don't turn in. And I've actually had students who have told me in the web design class that I taught that they had a really great website ready to go, but their computer blew up and they don't have anything to show me. There's nothing an instructor can do. You have to back up your stuff. Make up a backup plan for finishing the quarter. So if you are having some barriers, you are having some issues, try to think ahead on what do you need to do to get things done, even if it turns out your computer gets really sluggish and you need to go to the library to use computers. If the person you study with normally suddenly becomes unavailable, what else can you do? And so on. Make sure that you eat, drink lots of water, and get lots of good rest. These are really important things. So I hope these tips help you out. I hope you have a great quarter with me and with all of your instructors. I hope that you can get through and learn lots of stuff that helps you open doors, have more work opportunities, have just a more interesting vision of the world around you, and helps you make friends and new contacts and so on. Good luck and enjoy college. You're so lucky to be here the same way I was, and I'm so excited for you. Take care. Goodbye.